In today's video, we're gonna learn the basics of tuning your practice channel, okay? Many, 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 many uh, pipers go their whole lives with never tuning their practice channels. I don't know why, um, but it's something I see over and over and over again um, with teaching students, and it's something you should really do at least here and there, okay? Um, tuning your practice channel makes it more enjoyable for you to practice. It makes it makes it easier for you to hear, you know, if you're on with the person you're playing with or off. Okay, so it's, it's really good to tune your practice channel to, if you're taking one-on-one -on -one lessons with somebody, with that person. If you're in a pipe band, you know, tune your channel, you know, to the pipe major or pipe sergeant. Uh, if you're, you know, playing along with this video, you know, tune it to my channel. If you're a part of the Highland Bagpipe Academy, um, you know, tuning your channel, you know, to mine as well will make uh, your practices much more enjoyable and just much better, okay? Um, so, if, uh, if we're gonna tune this practice channel, um, there's a couple things we're gonna need, all right? We're gonna need some hemp, all right? Black or yellow. Um, you can buy hemp at any kind of bagpipe store online, or you can also buy hemp on Amazon, all right? Just look for, um, Bagpipe hemp, okay? You can get the waxed or unwaxed. I prefer the waxed. I think it gives a little bit more um, strength and it's just, it's just, just works a little bit better. Um, but you can use the unwaxed hemp if you prefer it as well. And be, the difference between yellow and black, there really isn't any, it's just the color. Um, you're also gonna need some electrical tape, okay? Uh, I prefer the little skinny electrical tape. Um, I feel like it works a lot better. Um, it's just easier to use. Yeah, if you have a regular electrical tape and you can't find the skinny stuff, but you can't find the skinny stuff on Amazon or any kind of hardware store, definitely at a bagpipe store you can find it. You can always uh, just cut it, just cut a regular piece like this and just sort of cut it in half. Um, but, you know, it's never perfect and it's kind of a pain. So <laughs> I would... Uh, I would opt for um, finding the skinny electrical tape if you can. Okay, um, another thing, if, if you uh, enjoy this lesson, um, I have uh, some free bagpipe lessons down below in the description um, for beginners that, that show you everything from, you know, things like this to, uh, you know, all the notes on the channel, you know, how to play, you know, grace notes and all your notes and some really basic tunes, all right? So it goes through all the basics of learning how to play the bagpipes, right? There's a free course in the description below. Uh, if you really want to dive in and learn how to play the bagpipes, I also have a course called, called the Highland Bagpipe Academy, where you learn everything from the very basics up to advanced stuff, all right? Um, so, back to tuning your practice chair. There's a couple different things you're gonna to have to do. One is you're gonna take the top off the channer, all right? And when you do that, make sure you do it really carefully, all right? Usually you use two hands like this, because you don't wanna just start ripping it apart. Um, you could crack your channer, all right? So you should have a practice channer look something like this, and you're just gonna take the top off like this, all right? Be careful not to damage the reed, okay? Sort of take it out like that. Okay, and you have a reed right here. Now, if you want your practice channer to get sharper, or sorry, sharper down, okay? You're gonna push your reed down. You're gonna take it out. You're gonna take a little bit of hemp off, all right? And you're gonna push it down a little bit further, okay? That will make your reed sharper. If you wanna make your reed flatter, you add a little bit of hemp, all right? You might need to, you know, cut a piece off here and add it to the um, reed and you seat your reed a little bit higher, okay? Like that. If you have a little bit of hemp like this, always just sort of um, put it around the base of the reed like that, all right? So it's not just dangling there. All right, so again, you wanna make your reed sharper, you're gonna push it down further into the reed seat. If you wanna make your reed flatter, you're gonna bring it up a little bit into the reed seat, okay? Now, how do you, how do you know, um, you know, if your reed is too flat or too sharp, all right? That's the biggest question. When you're playing um, your practice channel with the recording or with your instructor or your pipe major, 
you know, and you're you're just sort of playing along. If you blow harder, all right, and it sounds like you're more in tune with the person you want to be in tune with, then you need to make your reed sharper, okay? So this is me blowing normal. This is me blowing harder. All right, you can hear the difference. When I'm blowing harder, I'm making the reed sharper um, just by blowing harder. All right, so if the if you sound like you're more in tune with the person you want to be, when you're blowing harder, you're going to take your reed and you're going to sink it a bit, okay? And the same works the opposite way, right? So if you're playing, all right, that's how I normally play, but if I let off a bit and I go, all right, I'm blowing a little bit flatter, okay? If you sound like you're more in tune, um, when you blow a little bit flatter, then you need to take your reed and just kind of raise it a bit, okay? And that'll get you more in tune with the person that you're trying to be in tune with, <laughs> all right? So again, one more time, um, when you blow hard, if it sounds better, sink your reed. If you blow lighter and it sounds better, raise your reed, okay? Now, that covers kind of the reed just sort of in general, all right? If there's individual notes that sound really, really sharp, um, then you're just gonna put a little bit of tape over that note, okay? I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, so, this channer always has a bit of tape on the high G, okay, a lot of channers do. But this channer does, and uh, this is the reason why. All right, the high G is, is just sharp, all right? So if you're playing with another person, you're like, oh, man, all the notes sound pretty good, except, you know, the high G s just sounds funny, or, you know, maybe it's your D or your high A. You Typically, it's, it's, it's your high G or your high A um, that are going to be sharp compared to somebody else. But it could be any note, right? Um, if that's the case, all you do is you take your tape, um, and you just cut it. All right, cut off a little piece like that. Or you take the tape that you poorly cut in half <laughs> and put it on there. And you just cover the hole. All right, now, um, you might want to start by covering, you know, maybe a quarter of the hole and see if that fixes it. All right, I can tell right there that it's still just a little bit sharp. Um, so if that's the case, you know, you're, right now you're covering the top of the hole. Always cover the top of the hole, okay? Don't cover the bottom. So I would say, well, okay, I just need to cover it a little more. And you would just sort of cover it just a little bit more. And you go, all right, you're like, well, maybe just even a hair more. Um, cover it. All right, so that sounds pretty good. So then you would try playing again with... Uh, your instructor or your pipe major or with these videos and uh, hopefully it will be in tune. All right. Um, so that's how you tune individual notes. All right. So we've covered how to tune the entire channer. And if, if you have one or two notes that are kind of sticking out and they sound funny, um, you can put a little bit of tape on the top part of the hole, right? Not the bottom cover, you know, the top, you know, try, like I said, try to cover the top quarter of the note with some tape. Uh, and then, you know, maybe, you know, um, three eighths <laughs> and then, and then half. If you start covering more than half of a note, um, it, your chair is probably going to squeak. All right. Um, so try to keep it to, um, half you know, or less. All right. Okay. That is the basics of how to tune your practice chanter. Uh, obviously, you know, it's it's not quite as, um, I'm not taking quite as much detail to do this as you will, you know, your, your pipe chanter when you're doing that, um, but at least gets your practice chanters in better tune with videos like this and instructors, okay? Like I mentioned before, so many pipers just never tune their practice chanter. I don't know why, it drives me crazy, um, and it should drive you crazy. Um, just have, you know, 
just tune your practice chanter when, when playing with all these people, um, whether it's an instructor or me, and you will have a much better practice, a much more productive practice, and in general, it would just be a lot better, okay? I hope you like this video on tuning your practice channel, the basics of tuning your practice channel. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel, please like the channel and all that good stuff. All right.